Dominic Perrottet, thanks so much for your time. I know you were watching Pleasure. that media conference. You must be really frustrated. I'm surprised you didn't throw a chair at the TV, given it's New South Wales that has largely and consistently taken the bulk of overseas travellers. Well, that's right, Laura. I mean, we've taken more than 50% of returning Australians uh, right across the country. But look, listening to that, I think it's pretty clear right now we need greater positivity and unity. And yes, there's going to be issues from time to time, but we've got to have a constructive dialogue between political leaders. And uh, yes, this is a challenging time in Australia and for states and the Commonwealth. But I tell you what, uh, we're not going to move forward if we're going to fight with each other and have the blame game. Uh, I think Australians need leaders to step up right now. And if there are issues, uh, let's work through them behind closed doors in a constructive way. Um, and that's the only way we're going to get through uh, this period of time. Look, there's individual choice here when it comes to the vaccine and everyone should support that. Anastasia Palaszczuk there saying it wasn't a decision of National Cabinet. Why should it be a decision of National Cabinet? Isn't this about an individual's choice, whether they take the AstraZeneca vaccine in consultation with their doctor and the facts? Well, that's my understanding because I'm not a member of the National Cabinet, but um, just when this information came out yesterday, I actually spoke to our Chief Health Officer and the Health Minister in relation to it as somebody who's under 40, uh, who's not eligible until yesterday for any va uh, vaccine. Um, the, uh, the advice that came back was in line with what it has been previously, um, and that is that, uh, you know, you can um, take the, uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine if you're uh, younger than 40, uh, in circumstances where obviously you consult with your GP and if that's the advice and that's how you want to proceed, then that's up to you. Dominic Perrottet, you've been one of the ones asking for a plan to get us out of the pandemic. I mean, as a, a state a treasurer, you can only do so much, of course, because there needs to be a consultation. Looking at that media conference today from Queensland, do you have any hope that we are going to have any kind of national plan over the next year or is it going to be rolling lockdowns and restrictions? Well, it's going to be very difficult to get to a national plan. Um, if we're going to blame each other uh, through this period of time. And I think it's time that people step up and uh, work through the issues that we have. And there's no doubt, in my view, I think the hotel quarantine system has been incredibly successful. Yes, there are breakouts from time to time, uh, but look, that was always going to happen. And the main thing is for states to get on top of that as quickly as possible. Uh, but you know, just look around the world right now. I think the challenge for Australians is going to be, if you go back 12 months ago uh, when, when there were lockdowns across the country, uh, we looked overseas and we saw uh, situations in Italy where hospitals were overrun with cases. Uh, now uh, we look overseas and uh, we see last night a packed crowd for uh, the England-Germany uh, football match uh, you've got the Foo Fighters playing in front of a full house at Madison Square Garden. The NBA playoffs um, are packed. Um, and I think this conversation is going to turn uh, very quickly. And the challenge here um, in Australia is we can't be a victim of our success. And early on in the pandemic, you know, when we we're talking about things like flattening the curve, we were saying that because there were a number of cases coming through. Uh, but because of an accident of geography, we've been able to shift from suppression uh, to elimination. Um, but the reality going forward, as the vaccine rollout uh, expands, is that we're going to shift back into a suppression strategy. And, um, and that is what's happening around the world. And yes, is that more of a challenge for us here because of our success in the past? Uh, yes, but we've got to have this conversation um, uh, with the Australian people, uh, because if we don't, uh, we'll end up, you know, I'll look back just uh, you know, a, a few short months ago, uh, we were saying things like, you know, Australia is the Shangri-La of the world. Well, if we're not careful, we'll end up being the backwater um, if we don't get the vaccine rolled out and work together to achieve that um, and open up our borders. And can, we cannot continue uh, to be in a situation for the next six to 12 months um, that we continue to go into lockdown and shut ourselves off from the rest of the world. Treasurer, people have been so compliant. We've had a few on the fringes who get imposed with fines, sure. But 18 months, 
The Australian public has accepted restrictions and lockdowns. Businesses have gone to the wall. People have had to rely on government payments. Is it that patience, do you sense, is that patience running out? Well, I think it will if we keep blaming each other and you have leaders um, of, of the Commonwealth of States um, attacking others for issues that occur over time. There are going to be issues over time. We're in a pandemic. But the people of Australia have done an amazing job. Let's just pause for a moment and accept the fact that we have been incredibly successful, more successful than any other country in the world in terms of um, you know, eliminating the virus and whilst at the same time having as many freedoms as possible. Uh, but uh, what we do need to do going forward is to make sure we get as many people vaccinated, work constructively together. The vaccination rate will increase if we have the states and the Commonwealth having positive messages, clear messages to the, to the public. And mm. when leaders shift to a blame game to potentially cover their own issues, um, then what that does uh, is undermine confidence in the system. And the success that we've had in our country, all states together, has been by instilling confidence and building confidence, we've been able to continue to grow our economy, create more jobs, um, and that, in many ways, has been an enormous success. But let's not have our success to date be ruined uh, in circumstances where uh, a blame game starts and the vaccination ra rate uh, slows going forward. We've got to work together, the states and the Commonwealth. Let's get this done as a country and open ourselves back up. Mm. All right, finally, we've been a little sidetracked by that media conference from Queensland. We weren't expecting it, but I did get you on to talk about the business support that you announced yesterday. How many businesses will this cover? And do you anticipate that you're going to have to do this from time and time again, up and down like a yo-yo for the next year or so? Well, I certainly hope not. And I think um, the approach we're taking at the moment will ensure that New South Wales opens back up um, as quickly as possible. Uh, we think around 150,000 businesses will qualify, but it's too early to tell um, at the moment. But for those businesses with a turnover um, reduction of 75%, they'll receive a $10,000 payment, 50% uh, a $7,000 payment, uh, and 30% a $5,000 payment. We're also deferring some of those payroll tax and gaming tax liabilities uh, through July just to help uh, businesses with cash flow. But, you know, Laura, if you look at the, the, the last period of time, uh, we've been incredibly successful in this state. The jobs that we lost during the pandemic have all been recovered, plus some. Uh, so we just want to keep as many businesses going, as many people in work, instill that confidence. And I'm happy that yesterday's package was well received by industry. And if that just gives confidence to businesses uh, that there is help on the other side and gets them through this, well, that's what this is all about. Don Perrette, a big wrap from Jennifer Westercott this morning too. As always, uh, thanks so much for your time. We'll speak soon. Thanks, Laura.